Hi, it's so glad to have you join me on another exciting episode of Agribusiness Weekend. I'm Joel Labaran. Now, before I go on the show, do well to click on that red button and subscribe so you prefer to get notifications on the Agribusiness Weekend platform. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Now, land preparation is important to ensure that the field is ready for planting. It's the best control for pest um, invasion and crop diseases. I have with me the founder and managing director of Soil to Silo, Jamie Riston. Thank you very much for being on set with me. Pleasure. You're welcome to the Agribusiness Weekend Show. Thank you. Now, how long have you been in Nigeria? Um, well, I came in uh, around, I think it was around 2014, um, and I was working for a corporate um, organization, sort of selling equipment and um, and obviously sort of consultancy services. And you've been Nigeria. doing agriculture since you came into Nigeria? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. Now, let's talk about land preparation. Why is it important to um, engage in land preparation as the first stage for crop production? Well, I think traditionally, um, when people think about land preparation, um, they immediately sort of think about well, the first, well, what they deem to be the first process, okay. which is your, you know, using a plow and using a harrow, and that's it. Um, well, in actual fact, it actually starts way before that. Right. Um, it actually starts at the phase, the very first phase of land clearance, and making sure that your land is clean before you even start doing any sort of cultivations or plowing or whatever it might be. Okay. Yeah, because when you, if you go through Nigeria, and I've traveled extensively through the country, okay. and one of the things that one of the challenges, biggest challenges for many farmers, um, is the fact that many of the lands have you know big stumps in them. They you know the 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 soils have lots of deep roots in them. Now all this, if you want to really develop land, all this stuff has to go. And especially if you're going to adopt more mechanization yeah. methods for, yeah. for your cultivations. All right, now tell us what are the steps um, in land preparation? First thing, what are the, what's the first thing to do followed by what was the process? Well, I mean, the first, the first thing to do is to, as I said before, it's, it's create a clean land. Okay. okay. And that is getting rid of your stumps, getting rid of any sort of um, wood or whatever that might be on your land. Have a clear boundaries as to what your land looks like. Okay. Okay. So, so get yourself a piece. You know, it might be however big, two hectares, whatever it might be. Okay. Make sure that that area that you're going to be doing, where you're going to be planting is clean first. First. Okay. Um, if you actually look at how cultivations and land preparation has developed over the last 40 years, let's say. Yeah. A lot more people, a lot more farmers and agribusinesses are moving away from the traditional type plow. Yeah. Now, as we see, I mean, we've all been around Nigeria and the first thing people jump to is a plow, a disc plow. Now, for me, it's it's quite outdated technology. Okay. Um, when you consider that the disc plow was invented around the sort of the, the 1930s and 1940s okay. um, to turn soil over, and it was great back then, but times have moved on. Yeah, technology has um, certain. Correct. People know a lot more about how structure of soil is made up, um, and the importance of actually making sure that you're not working just in the top four inches of the of the soil. Okay. And you know and See, if you if you go through Nigeria again, you, you see, if you look at the rivers, most of them are brown. Yeah. And why is that? I get well, the soil. Correct. Okay. Exactly. So, and what happens is that because uh, most people are only going in and cultivating in that very top layer of the soil, yeah. um, when the rains come, it literally washes all that top soil away because you form what they call a pan. Okay. okay. Now, in order for you to um, do cultivation and to do create a good seed bed for your crop, you need to break through that pan okay. so that the roots can then penetrate and yeah. then they have access to a lot more nutrients and a lot more water and everything else that they might need. And that's when you, you bring in a thing called a subsoiler or ripper. 
Now that will, traditionally, that will go down anywhere between 30 and 40 centimeters into the ground. Amazing. So it goes in very deep, okay. but it breaks that pan. Yeah. And then after that, you would then do a thing like a, a heavy harrow or something like that to then to start fluff up the, the topsoil to firstly, um, to level it. And secondly, makes it fluffy for when you actually come in with your, your planter to plant the seed. Now, what are the effects on the crop? Um, what are the effects on crop production when the land preparation is not properly taking place? Well, it, it will affect a number of things. I mean, first thing is, is germination rates. Okay. You know, because, um, you know, your, your, as, as the plant, as, as your, your seeds start to germinate, if they can't access, start to access water, because the first thing that comes out with germination is, is the root. Okay, yeah. Now, the root will then start to drop down and then the, the, uh, the plant section, like the leaf, will then start to poke itself through. Now, the root needs water. It needs to start gaining nutrients for the proper growth of, of the, the leaf okay. and the plant. So if you don't get that right, if you've got a very compacted soil, or this root hits that pan that I spoke about earlier, yeah. You, it, it will start to become stunted. Wow. And then, if, you know, if it, then if it doesn't get water during that period, mm -hmm. it will just die. It'll just wither and die. So have you have you um, had any experience of, of something like this or? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've been growing crops for, for all my life. So, wow. I mean, I come from a farming family. Um, you know, I, you know, I've, I've worked in many different soils. I've, I've worked for, um, on big agri business to small farmers. Wow. And it's amazing. the the, the the smallest thing you can do to make the biggest differences yeah and lamb preparation is one of those things okay you know because it's and it, it, it's crucial it's absolutely crucial to whatever you do if you get that right then you can tick off that list one of the many variables that is farming all right because farming is all about variables yeah you know we know that it's 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 not just about so you can have the best seed for example and land preparation is the first stage I correct guess. yes um and and you know it's and it's all about the control of the environment farming is is about control of an environment yeah okay and you can and all of that is made up of variables if you don't if it doesn't get enough water at a specific times during its growing process then it won't grow if it doesn't get fertilizer when it needs it if it's being attacked by by insects or or whatever it might be if, yeah. if things are not done to to reduce that then you're going to have you're going to have you, you won't get a crop and your your yields are going to be very low now now depending on the type of produce are there different ways to land preparation? For instance, okay, I want to produce maize. Is there a particular way or process I should go through for, for a maize land preparation? Or I want to produce cassava. Is there a specific way I must prepare the land for to produce cassava? Yes, I mean, you know, certainly, I mean, cassava, it, I mean, if you compare cassava to maize, now, you you, you actually, with, with cassava, because you're dealing with basically a tuber, yeah. uh, a root tuber, okay, now, they're, they're quite large, um, and so you need that top section of soil to be relatively loose, okay. and, and, and so this thing can grow uniformly. Okay. If you start getting hard spots in the ground, your cassava won't grow uniformly. Oh, okay. Whereas if you compare that to something like maize, let's say you don't, you need it um, fluffy for the first section, but the important thing is to, uh, for the, this pan to be broken so the roots can penetrate deep. Okay, um, so it can then obviously gain water. So you would do, there would be slightly different techniques for um, for maize versus cassava, for example. So the techniques are different depending yes. on the type of soil, uh, yeah. on the type of produce. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, something like cassava, I mean, in, in, if you look at um, the way they do commercial cassava in, let's say, Brazil, okay. they, will, they will create a ridge and then within that ridge, they will grow the cassava. Okay. Okay. And if you actually look around Nigeria, the traditional way to grow cassava is in mounds. Okay. Where guys will, 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 will obviously plant the yeah. cassava um, in a mound and then that, because it's loose, because it's been piled and piled and piled, mm -hmm. you will have a good medium for that, for that cassava to grow. Whereas if you did it straight into the ground, unless you've done the, you know, the proper lamb prep, yeah. it won't grow as well um, because it's, it's always fighting against the density of the soil. 
Okay. And the other things, I mean, uh, what, the other thing that will affect what type of cultivation you use is obviously your soil type as well. Okay. That has a huge impact. Okay. See, some to soils don't need to be worked too hard. Oh, wow. Well, because okay. if you work them too hard, they turn to dust. Oh, wow. Okay? okay, and then that either blows away or gets washed away. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's, there's other techniques, they call it minimum tillage, um, which is being um, extensively used in South America. Um, you know, they were the ones who really um, uh, started developing it um, okay. because they have these sort of very light soils and they want to retain, they have a lot of heat and they want to retain as much moisture as possible. So it's important that the farmer checks the type of soil he has yes. before engaging in land preparation. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's, there's no such thing as a, a kind of a, a one size fits all. Okay. Um, you can, but you'll never get the, the optimum yields from your crop if you, if you don't um, actually consider all those things before you start. Jamie, I must say you've been doing amazing. Thank you very much for all this um, information and knowledge you've been sharing with us on the Agribusiness Weekend platform. All right, so we'll take a short break now and when we we'll come back, the show continues. Don't go anywhere. Here at Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange, also known as LCFA, our vision is to transform the Nigerian commodities market and redefine practice standards. Lagos Commodities and Futures Institute, catalyzing economic growth in Nigeria through the commodities ecosystem. Welcome back. You're still watching Agribusiness Weekend and Jamie is still on set with us. Thank you very much for staying with us and thank you for all the insights you've been sharing with us on land preparation. Now, um, this is the second part of the show and basically it's a game. So, so let's, let's, let's calm down on the land preparation. That's a good one, but okay, let's have fun. Okay. So we have 10 questions on our list, but you're going to be answering three questions randomly. Okay. So um, you pick any number okay. and, and I ask you the question. So let me get your first number. Um, lucky number four. Lucky number four. What's the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Oh, wow. Um, that, is, that is a really tough question. Um, Goodness. I mean, the thing is, you know, to compare one place to another is pretty hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because every, everywhere is pretty unique. Um, but I, I would say, um, I would say, actually, as a, as a whole place, okay. um, I think Cape Town is one of my favorite places. Amazing. Cape Town, South Africa? Very beautiful. Yeah, in South wow. Africa. It, it is a beautiful place. But, you know, I can't take anything away from other places I've visited either. But there is a very, it's a very special part of the world. All right. Let me get your second question. Number three. Number three. Can you tell us your best childhood memory? Um, I think one of my best childhood memories was because um, uh, I grew up on a farm. So, um, and, and every summer um, when I was young, probably from the age of about six or seven, we would do, uh, we would obviously harvest the crop and then we would have bales, like okay. these small square bales. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I used to enjoy was being part of the teams that would then take those bales off the fields. Okay. And even from my youngest age, I, um, even though I couldn't lift the bales, I used to roll them. Okay. And uh, it was just so much fun. I mean, being on the farm with a whole group of people and everyone working together for a common goal um, of getting these straw bales off the off the land um, was very, very special. Very That's special. amazing. All right, so we'll go to the last question. Um, sorry, how many questions are there? Up to? There are 10. 10? Oh, yeah. Goodness, I haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll go for a number seven. Number seven. All right, so let's do... Um, tongue twisters. 
Oh my word. No. The tongue twisters. So yeah. I have this um, this sentence, the sun shall soon shine. I ask most of my guests and <laughs> some of them speak in tongues. Alright, so, <laughs> so the sun shall soon shine. The sun shall soon shine. I want you to say that five times and please don't make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the sun shall sunshine. Oh. The sun shall sunshine. The sun shall sunshine. The sun shall sunshine. <laughs> Was that right? <laughs> All right, that was right. Uh, at least you tried. You tried. That was amazing. So, Jamie, on behalf of myself and the Agribusiness Weekend team, we want to give you this package to it. say thank you for coming to the Agribusiness Weekend show. Lovely. Well, thank you very much indeed. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you. And so, this is a wrap up on today's episode of Agribusiness Weekend. Till I come your way next time, make sure you ensure that your land is prepared before planting. Goodbye.